Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make a 1.5 volt nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride battery charger for single cells. We just need one LED, two resistors, and one diode, and two battery connectors, one uh, 5 volt connector for power, and a circuit board to make these circuits or these parts connect together on this board so here is the circuit diagram you can look at the circuit diagram here and I actually have done already a, ba a battery charger like this and it works I can show it to you right here you connect it on USB there is one LED that lights up when you connect it and if you put a rechargeable battery in it like this one as you can see nickel cadmium AA 600 milliamp hours and if you put it in the other LED turns on indicating it's charging so I've already done this circuit but to show it on the video i'm going i'm going to do it again and i actually have two nickel cadmium cells in hand one is thousand milliamp hours double a nickel cadmium and the other one is 600 milliamp hour, 600 milliamp hours as you've seen it right here so this uh, part of the circuit diagram is just additional let me focus okay the additional part is when you plug in the charger there is one LED lighting up as you can see and if you want just one LED you don't have to put this LED and uh, 470 ohms or 330 ohms res resistor you don't have to put these these are just for indicators if the charger is working or connected to the USB or not if there is like a power source on the circuit it's just to indicate that so we don't need this and I'm actually not going to use this circuit this time while making it on the video uh, by this circuit board on there and I have these two um, battery connector things that will connect to the board and we are gonna put the battery like this I'm gonna put it like this because if I put it like this it may not fit actually it won't fit at all and I'm just going to put the holders like this on each side of the board so we can start making it but before going to before I'm going to start making the circuit, I'm going to talk about the characteristics of the nickel cadmium batteries and this circuit diagram. So I usually use these two nickel cadmium batteries in my uh, electric toothbrush, which runs off of double A cells. And I was just bored of buying new cells, alkaline cells, and it was very costly actually and these actually don't run the machine properly here's the machine let me show it to you the machine actually doesn't run uh, properly with these alkaline batteries because I've noticed that when I plug in these nickel cadmium cells I can brush my teeth much better and much faster because these alkaline batteries are not meant to be used in high current or high power applications because when you draw too much current from them which I actually measured the current draw of this uh, toothbrush and when normal load when it's loaded it draws about 1.5 amps from the batteries which actually drains these alkaline cells that doesn't have much capaci capacity at all very fast and when the voltage drops the performance of the uh, toothbrush drops significantly so the nickel cadmium cells have 
1.2 volts of internal voltage. Let me focus. Okay. It has 1.2 volts only. And it can go up to 1.3 or 1.4 in some cases when charged, charged fully. And uh, this voltage is normally lower than alkaline cells voltages. Because alkaline cells, cells obviously run at 1.5 volts. Or they supply 1.5 volts, not run. <laughs> and the disadvantages of the 1.5 volt alkaline batteries is the fact that when I draw too much current from them, the voltage drops drastically and uh, it causes the machine to or the toothbrush to not work properly. But on chemistry of the nickel cadmium cells, uh, if you draw even like short circuit the battery almost with uh, very low resistance and draw too much current from it, the voltage doesn't drop. The voltage usually stays at 1.2 volts or at 1.3 volts at very good cells. And this actually makes your device that runs on higher currents much more stable than these alkaline cells. So that's why I switched to using nickel cadmium cells in my toothbrush other than using these disposable alkaline batteries. By the way, these are not char chargeable too, so they are not good for the environment and they are basically not good for anything. Maybe you can use them in like a mouse or a remote, like low power applications. They will be fine, but using a nickel cadmium or a nickel metal hydride battery is much more efficient and it's actually much better. But the only advantage of the alkaline cells are they are cheaper, much cheaper than nickel cadmiums. Nickel cadmiums are a bit more expensive, but it's worth a bit more money to put on when you can charge them with ease with this circuit. So when we come into charging the batteries like this, we have this kinds of circuits. So we don't need any microchips or anything because it's not a lithium ion battery. It doesn't need to be charged in a constant current or constant voltage charging uh, uh, property, but you can just use it with some current limiting resistors and some indicating LEDs and some diodes and with just five volts, which USBs run it and USBs are basically everywhere so you can use this basically anywhere. So this circuit is very simple and very cheap but the only disadvantage it has is the fact that it charges the cells very slow. But this is actually a good thing in one hand because nickel cadmium cells if charged slowly can charge more than intelligent chargers or fast chargers, fast nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride chargers, because uh, the chemistry is different than lithium batteries, lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries are designed to charge up fast, but nickel cadmiums are not. So you can make the circuit and plug it in and leave it plugged in overnight and the cell would be charged. But, but there is one thing is that do you have to completely drain the nickel cadmium cells before charging charging them because they have something called memory effect which basically just uh, destroys the capacity of the cell and you have to charge completely discharge the battery and then recharge it so this these cells are generally discharged down to 1.1 volts or 1 volts and you have to charge them when they drop to that voltage. You can completely discharge them down to zero volts and they actually will be fine. And you can actually use that method to store your uh, nickel cadmium batteries for a long time. Let's get on building the circuits. So we have one, one and 4,007 diode. You can use any diode. Uh, it could be any diode, but don't use Zener diodes. 
Uh, one and four thousand seven diodes are the most popular diodes on the market, so you can find them for very cheap. Uh, you can use any one hundred to two hundred milliamp hour uh, diode, and if you have a diode higher than that current capability, you can use it too because one and four thousand and seven is a one amp diode. Um, and as I said, there is two LEDs and one extra resistor for the extra LED on the circuit, so you don't have to use this circuit actually. And I'm actually not going to use this circuit to indicate a power input to the charger. So these two components are not really necessary. This is 330 ohm resistor and one LED. So you can use any color if you want like you can use any color of LED you want and it's not gonna do a change other than if you use a red LED your cells are gonna be charged a bit bit faster than blue or other colors that drop uh, higher voltages on the across the pins of the LED so I'm going to use a red LED you can use whatever color you have it doesn't really matter and we have 200 ohm resistors as you can see so just four components if you don't count the battery holder and the circuit board and the uh, usb charger cable so let's start building it Okay, so I'm going to start by inserting the diode first to the circuit. So, okay, the circuit was actually working and my assumptions were actually wrong, so <laughs> this LED blinking and just, uh, you know, cutting off is the reason, the fact that I use a pow power adapter, like a phone charger, and the phone charger just cuts the output if there's no, no current draw, so... If I put my multimeter on 20 volts and measure the voltage across, you can see 4.45 volts. But that's gonna drop when I put the battery in. I'm putting the battery in like this. Wait, what? What is going on here? Oh, okay. It was a bad contact. So, as you can see, the voltage dropped to 
Okay, this connector is not very good. Uh, the voltage dropped to, down to 1.31 volts or... Come on. 1.3.15. And it's actually going up a bit. So let's measure the charging current. This is gonna be a bit tricky. So the charging current, as you can see, is 30 milliamps. So we did the circuit, circuit right. So just to clear out some confusion on the video, because the circuit actually worked, and uh, I just uh, think that it actually didn't, but it actually works. So as you can see, it's drawing no current. Show the current. It's drawing no current right now. I'm going to put in the cell and as you can see it's drawing about 30 milliamps from the adapter right now and it's actually supposed to charge it with 30 to 40 milliamps so the circuits as circuit is actually working just to clear out some confusion from the video so this was how to make a battery charger like this I'm still measuring it right wrong um, as you can see, it's charging the battery right now. So, in this video, I showed you how to make this battery charger circuit by using very simple components. That was the end of the video. If you liked and found the video helpful, please press the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. This is Arduino Atelier. See you on the next video.